Welcome back, everybody. My name is Mr. Reality from At Reality Forecast on YouTube, and I'm joined with psychic medium, world-renowned Liz Cross. How are you, Liz? Great. Thank you. This is exciting. I've always wanted to go to Egypt, by the way. I've always wanted to see the pyramids just to see what they look like. Maybe, but I wanted to maybe in some time in the future, we organize a trip <laughs> with, our, All right. with our group. That would yeah, be, we'll do a group. What, we'll do a CTT what? in Egypt yeah. uh, when it's a little bit more calm over there, probably. Yeah. Uh, this is the Pharaoh Menace, uh, Menace, Menace. I don't know if I can pronounce his name uh, correctly or if I'll continue to pronounce it incorrectly, but he lived, he's kind of attributed to combining upper and lower Egypt, which is a you know, pretty big feat. And I wondered if we could bring in the energy of this person and and talk to him about that feat and about his life and about what he's been doing since. He's yes. Very arrogant, very narcissistic. <laughs> That's the energy I'm picking up. Very it's a single egotistical. person though. Very ego egotistical. Um, yes, this was at one time the King or the Pharaoh he's telling me. And this was his, uh this was his legacy the founder of the first dynasty the identity of minas remains a uh, ongoing debate however people identify him with either naguada the third uh or hor aha can he combine any shiny light on that what was his true name were you naguada no nor narmar narmar no, or aha, yeah. It was hor aha. The well, key. Can he tell us what his goal was and how he came to that life path of deciding he wanted to combine these regions that were heretofore not combined? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that was something that he had to do. There was too much uh, spillover of the people, right? And it was about bringing all of the people under one rule. There was too much uh, breakaway and there was too much, like they wanted to be part of this region and they wanted to be part of the Egyptian region. And it was just, it was much easier to just incorporate everyone together. Now, did he have direct contact with, or was he in in cahoots with any type of extraterrestrial beings at that time? Ooh, were you in contact with any extraterrestrial? Not that he was aware of, no, but possibly, uh, did you have psychics working for you? Yes, mystics. Um, they had mystics and psychics, and uh, that was how they received their information back then, right? That was the, you know, they didn't have TV. They didn't have telephones or uh, social media or newspapers or things like that, right? They had to find a way of obtaining information. And your channelers, your mystics, your psychics were the most important aspects of your kingdoms. And I have found that even when I probe into the UK and the various kingdoms in the UK that use sorcerers, you know, Merlin uh, came about in that, like, that's why Merlin was so powerful, because he was a seer, and he could tell when danger was coming. Did Horaha have any access to high technology that's hidden from us today? Only like... Well, he says like modern day AI. Yeah. I mean, what, how in the, what, how, what, what go back, back up AI. Like, they had access to AI in 3100 BC. Well, in, in a, in a way it was like programming, programming different things. I mean, that's what AI essentially is. It's programming uh, something to have, you know, 
a, a purpose. And oftentimes they would try to program using different methods of spirituality as somebody having a purpose. But did they have technological augmentation or, you know, weaponry that I think, or healing technology that has been talked about them having? Did you have? No, 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 not, not, nothing technology related as we know it today. No. So the artificial intelligence he's talking about was more metaphysical and done through seers. Yes, yes, through yes, through magic and stuff like that. Yes. What was his religious ideology as a pharaoh? What was your religious ideology? Well, he thought he was the religion, right? He he believed that he was appointed by God, which is very typical of the belief systems back then that the ruler was appointed by God or by source or many gods, uh, the rulers of the people. And uh, so he believed that he was responsible for setting a lot of the guidelines that people should live by. And so he believed people should pay homage to him as an intermediary to the gods. Exactly. Yes. So did he think it was ironic that the gods killed him with a hippopotamus? And is that story true? That the gods killed you with a hippopotamus? No, he didn't die. Um, no, that's not how he passed. No, That's apocryphal. He, yes, he actually passed of uh, illness. And what was his realization when he crossed over, realizing that his entire pharaonic existence uh, may have been, you know, in error and based on a bit of a false godhood syndrome? Well, when he gets to the other side, he says, wow, I'm actually nobody compared to what I was on the earth plane. And I'm like, yeah. And uh, he realizes how how vacant we are of this knowledge, how much of a distance there is between the human brain and the, the actual spirit world, and that we are grasping to, to find and make sense of all of this through our human brains. And this is like beyond comprehension, how it was all uh, developed. So it, it's very tricky to, you know, no one's at fault, he says. We, we are just living out as humans. Humans are imperfect. You know, I get this sometimes where people are like, well, Liz, you know, you, you may have got something wrong. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I'm not God. Or you didn't see the Israeli... A uh, war happening. Actually, uh, there's a video that's resurfaced that I did two or three years ago that that basically spelled out everything that's going on now. Uh, but you didn't, you know, you didn't see this. You didn't warn us ahead of time. Well, because I'm not God. You know, God is the one that has the all knowing. I'm still a human being. Um, but he was very surprised when he got to the. A spirit world and he was like hmm okay that's what this is this is nothing like how we are living on the earth plane at that time let's ask him did he know who built the pyramids they were there long before he was there what were the stories about them that they were put there by god That's fascinating. <laughs> right. I know. He's very, you know, he's very much like uh, he's not going in up to a lot of depth. What do you mean? They were put here 
by God. Well, God ordered them to be built. And so uh, the person, the Pharaoh at the time, ordered them, you know, ordered people to build them. Did he have any knowledge of the great flood of Atlantis? No, he had heard stories, but uh, he didn't really believe them. Was he an avid reader? No, no. So maybe that's why he hadn't heard of it. How many lifetimes has he had since being the pharaoh of Egypt? And has he been pharaoh or presidents in other lifetimes? He's had about six lifetimes since then. That's not very many. No, it really isn't. And I'm saying, why so little? He says, because I'd like to leave a legacy. So have you come down and, uh, you know, back in and and ruled again? Uh, he hasn't been the ruler again, but he's certainly been around the ruler, very close ties to the rulers, ambassadors, uh, you know, working in cabinets and things like that. Uh, but yes, he's not, he hasn't been a ruler again. He would like to be, but I don't well, think that wish will be granted. How has he been spending time on the other side, if not incarnating? He does a lot of thinking. He's the type of person or soul rather that likes to go into deep contemplation and deep thinking. All right, we'll let him get back to that. Hey, Liz, thank you very much. Uh, Pharaoh, for aha, we appreciate your time and your, your joining us today. Yeah, he says, I'll be back again if you'll have me. <laughs> I'm like, we'll come back with longer answers next time. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye.